Lux 2 just dropped, and instead of doing a surface level first look, I want to walk through what actually matters in this update. A lot of models look impressive in demos, but they fall apart when you try to use them for real work. Things like consistent characters, clean text, proper lighting, or even simple layout rules. Flux who claims to fix all of that. So in this video, I'm going to break down what's new, how each version of Flux 2 fits into the lineup, and then I'll run a quick demo so you can see how it behaves in real creative workflows, not just a cherry pick examples. So let's get into it. All right. So before we get into the video, let's understand who is behind Flux 2, and that is Black Forest Labs. So Black Forest Labs was founded in 2024, and their mission is to keep the model open source from the beginning. They believe that visual intelligence should be developed by researchers, creators, and developers, and should not be concentrated in few hands. That's why they are pairing the cutting-edge performance with open research and open innovation. That means for us users, we get access to high-level models that are free and also open source. They actually work alongside companies like Adobe to Meta. So you can see that their products are actually really good. And they're not just a open source program that's not getting a lot of traction. And this open course philosophy is kind of fueling that experimentation. And they invite people to actually look at their models, criticize them, test them out, and give feedback. So we can see Black Forest Lab is serious about the open source model. And today we're going to look at Flux 2 to see if it actually is good. So Flux 2 is actually updated on Flux 1. And Flux 1 was about showing how powerful media models can be as creative tools. And they delivered precision, efficiency, control, and realism. But Flux 2 kind of takes that to the next level and brings in frontier level capability. So we can see what features are new. First of all, multi-reference generation. You can now use up to 10 reference images at once and achieve industry leading consistency in characters, products, and visual styles. So now you can see that you can build a whole scene giving the model prompts of up to 10 images at once. There's also improved detail and photorealism. For many image models, when they would produce results, it would kind of felt a little bit incomplete and not realistic, kind of like AI slop. So they've improved that by adding sharper textures, more precise detailing, and more realistic lighting, which is really good for images. Then they also added advanced text rendering. So previous models, whenever there was text involved in generation, they would kind of blur the images or they didn't make sense. They weren't coherent. But Flux 2 improves that. They have added upgraded capabilities for typography, infographics, memes, and UI mockups that are actually clear, readable, and suitable for production use. Then they also added stronger prompt obedience. Sometimes when you give AI a prompt, it doesn't always stick to it or it doesn't really hit the key messages. But the model now follows complex multi-section prompts and compositional rules more accurately than before. It also has expanded its world knowledge, so it has a deeper understanding of real-world context, lighting, physics, and spatial relationships that kind of leads the scene to behave and look the way you would expect it to be. There's also higher resolution and more support for image editing, and it goes up to 4 megapixels, and that comes with greater freedom in aspect ratios and also input and output formats. So we can see Flux 2 has gotten upgraded and is trying to compete with Nano Banana Pro. Because all these features that are new seem similar to the launch that happened in Nano Banana Pro as well. So I'm going to try this model out. I'll put the link for the website that you can use to actually try this model off for yourself. I'm going to select the Flux 2 Pro model. And then I'm going to ask a prompt. And this prompt is supposed to test the model's ability to generate text as well prompt obedience. So the prompt is a clean studio product photo of a skincare bottle on a neutral beige background and use soft diffuse lighting. Place the product centered, add the text Lumi Botanical Hydration Serum at the top, and use a simple typography and keep the layout minimal and balanced. So let's try this out. Okay, so this is our generation. I mean, it's not bad. It looks pretty okay. I'm not super impressed with this because it kind of looks pretty dull. If I were to take away the text part of it, it looks pretty clean and matches the prompt as I gave it. It is staying true to the prompt. But when it comes to creativity, the font it could have used could have been better. But that's one example of how this model looks like in action. Now I'm going to try to give it something that's a little bit more complicated, which is to design a simple magazine cover layout. Place a person on the right side facing camera 
add the headline, the future of creative AI at the top, and two smaller subheadings on the left side in a clean sans serif text, so I'm being more specific, use a minimal modern aesthetic with soft lighting and lots of negative space. So now let's see how, what this does. All right, so this is the generation. It's not bad, like the person looks pretty realistic. He looks a little bit AI, but it's not super bad. And it matched the prompt of like on the right side facing the camera, which is good. At the top, it added the feature of creative AI. So no messing up over there. The subheadings are also there. So it's pretty good and has kept that negative space that we wanted. So it's not bad when it comes to prompt obedience and everything like that. So this is a really good option for someone that's trying to create something simple, but wants something specific. So I'm going to give it another prompt to try it as well. And this one is supposed to be a little bit more creative. I'm using a different area to test this model out because I didn't want to pay for the other platform. So I'm asking it to create an imaginative scene of a tiny astronaut exploring a giant kitchen countertop. So it's supposed to use a little bit of creativity and think outside the box. The astronaut is standing next to a glowing slice of toast like it's a monolith. Use soft cinematic lighting, a shallow depth of field, and warm morning tones, and small crumbs that look like boulders, and make the toaster in the background slightly out of focus. Keep the style realistic, but playful. So you can see I'm asking it very specific things. I'm also asking it things that are not really traditional, and I'm asking it to combine a bunch of elements into one. So let's see what this does. Set my batch size at four, meaning it's going to give me four options of it. But guys, this is actually pretty good. If we look at this, the astronaut looks pretty complete. Um, the boulders look like crumbs and everything like that. So this is actually pretty good. I might even use this for my thumbnails because this is actually a pretty good generation of it. Let's look at the other examples of it. Even this one is not bad at all. The toaster looks pretty clean and realistic. So it looks creative, but at the same time, it looks very, very like realistic. Something that somebody would actually take a photo of in a studio or something like that. Here's the other one. Oh, this one's my favorite. This one's not bad at all. Then we have this one, which is a close up of it. So we can see that I asked it to create four versions of it, but like the overall theme and everything like that is very consistent. So I like this a lot. So this is the early stages of it. It's not a bad model to have in your pocket as well, alongside Nano Banana Pro. And you can see like something cool and that I like in this version is that you can see the reflection of the bread. Obviously, the reflection looks a little bit off because the bread it should be a reflection of the side of the bread, but this is showing the front. These models are getting better every single time. So this is amazing to see. And this was, once again, as I mentioned, open source. And I know I keep on mentioning that, but that's a really important part of these type of models. So Flux 2 Pro is not the only model that has been released. It's actually a lineup of models. So we saw the Flux 2 Pro in the demos, which is supposed to deliver the state-of-the-art image quality on par with the top closed source systems. And it's supposed to offer an exceptional prompt fidelity and visual accuracy. Then we also have the Flux 2 Flex, and this is supposed to give developers a full control over generation parameters, things like step count, guidance scale, and it allows you to do fine grained balancing of quality, prompt and alignment, as well not compromising on performance. This model is also really good at producing crisp text and fine detail imagery. So this is a little bit layered model compared to the Pro one. Then we have the Flux 2, which is a 32 billion open weight model derived from the Flux 2 architecture. It's supposed to be the most capable open weight model for image generation and editing. So this is not like the Flux 2 Pro, which is supposed to compete with the closed source model. This is supposed to compete with the open source models. Then we also have a new model coming soon, which is the Flux.2 Client, which is supposed to be an open source Apache 2.0 license model distilled from the Flux2 base. And this is supposed to be more powerful and developer friendly than similarly sized models trained from scratch, basically. Then we also have Flux2 VAE, which is a newly engineered variational auto encoder. So it's supposed to provide a balanced blend of learnability, compression efficiency, and output quality. So all these models are available or are supposed to come and we can see the open source market is actually getting hotter and hotter as AI continues to grow. If you enjoyed this video, this is what we do here. Fast, clear updates on the biggest moves in AI. If you want to stay ahead of everything happening in this space, make sure you're subscribed. And if you want the hands-on side, demos, tools, workflows, and everything developers can actually build with, check out the world of AI. We also run a simple no-noise newsletter that gives you the most important AI tools and updates in just a couple of minutes. Subscribe here, follow World of AI, join the newsletter, and I'll see you in the next one.